I'd go to the ER and get an x-ray of my rib from damn Laney running me out, taking me out yesterday. So Please. I'm a little sore today. Please tell me that's a joke. Are you for real? <laughs> I'm sore. So but it was protecting the police officer behind me. Um, I thought, uh, what do we, when we want an opening statement? There's my opening statement. Glad I made it through practice today. <laughs> Lainey has no sympathy, I can tell you that. She was mad because I caught her. So she said she could get it. And I said, well, you can't leave the TerraFlex. But uh, no, I thought yesterday Arkansas, Kentucky was a great match. Uh, it could have gone either way. And Ar Arkansas uh, played great at the end to win that. And they've got some fierce competitors. They do some things really well. And it's this is going to be a, a epic match tomorrow. I see when uh, obviously you came to matches here when you were you know picking a recruit or whatever but what what don't you understand about playing at the banding until you're actually on the court and those 8,000 people are around you what what about that experience can you not understand until you experience it um it's kind of hard to explain but it's just a sense of support and love and just that they're on the court there with you um they're always very loud and I think they just have a good understanding of volleyball that they know when they should get louder and when they should cheer extra. And so I think that's the special thing is they know good volleyball and they know when we kind of need a little pick me up. Yeah, I just remember they always played fearless no matter if they were the underdog, if they were the smaller team, no matter what, they always just gave it their best shot and their best effort. And I know they always gave us a run for our money. And I know a lot of players on those team, that team can go off when they need to. And so we just have to be prepared for that tomorrow. But I would say fearless is a very good word to describe that team. John, what do you think of some of those smaller Arkansas pin hitters and what they're able to do? Well, they have a, a good system, and they're, they're trying to go fast and outquick you. And when you're smaller, that's a great plan uh, to have, and they're very good at it. So it doesn't, you know, to be a great attacker, it doesn't matter if you're tall or short or whatever. It's your arm speed, your vision, you know, how creative you are. Those are all the things that uh, allow hitters to be successful. When it's a like when it's a big match here, like that regional in 2016 or some of the Wisconsin match, Penn State matches, like how can you feel that it's a big match when you come out before the match or during the match? How can, how can you tell when it's a big match here? Well, there, there's a electricity in Devaney. You you can feel it. You can sense it. Uh, and it you know, it comes from our crowd. You know, and uh, again, I think there's going to be a lot of pent up. Uh, <laughs> excitement for, with our crowd, you know, to, to, to see and witness a regional against two great teams that are going to play their hearts out. Um, this is what college sports is what sports is all about, and there's a lot on the line for this, and um, uh, it's going to be, you know, a really, really competitive match, and um, that's what it takes this time of year to, to win a regional. You're going to have to dig down deep. I think throughout the whole season, they've done a really good job of just remaining calm and kind of learning as they go and taking each experience, each game, each set, each point, and just learning from it in the best that they can. And I think they've done a very good job of that all year, but specifically the last few weeks was kind of we started things that they had never done again. But I, I think they've all done a really good job. I think they've all handled finals and the tournament and all of that really, really well. And they also moved into apartments, so they had another thing thrown on top of them. But I think they've done a really good job of just managing what they have to do and making sure that they show up each and every day and give their best effort. But I think the entire year they've done a really good job of learning from whatever's thrown at them. Alexia, last year you lost to Oregon in the regional semifinals. To get to this point, is that a significant accomplishment for the team? Um, I mean, every game that you win, I think, is an accomplishment. But 
Every single year at the start of the year, we have really big goals. And our goal this year is to win a national championship and to get to Tampa. And so I feel like every game we win, it's a good accomplishment. But the job that we want to get done isn't nearly over yet. Um, I think, honestly, it's kind of easier to take it one game at a time when you are when you get farther along just because you're so locked into what the game plan is and that we win this game and we advance. That's all that matters. Um, there's not like a Big Ten championship in the way or anything like that. It's one game at a time. And so I think it's it can be a little bit easier just to focus on that and to give it all you have into that one game. So... I feel like that's what we've been doing. Uh, Lexi Merritt, coach said yesterday he thinks the games you guys struggle in the most are the ones that don't have as much of a big stage <laughs> that you guys perform better on the bigger stage. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> I think the team as a whole, we're just all competitors, and so we live for those games. And personally, I would much rather have a team that shows up really well in the big games and. I would rather struggle in the little games if we're going to struggle, or the smaller games if we're going to struggle in one of them. But I think we're all just really, really competitive, and so we live for those moments. We live for the teams that are going to make really good plays and that are going to push us, and we want teams to bring a lot of energy right back at us. We want them to test us, and so I think that just brings out the best in all of us, and I think it comes from all of us being super competitive. John, before, before the tournament began, you said... Um, on Big Ten Network that you weren't feeling a lot of pressure personally this year when the tournament started. Is that, is that still the case now? Yeah. Why, why is that? I don't know. I have to talk to my therapist. <laughs> uh, I, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year with this group, and Captain Merritt here can verify this, but we talked about what mindset I needed for this group. I needed to be patient and kind of just enjoy the ride with them uh, because we, we do have six new players. We have, we're, you know, we're playing freshmen. So uh, I, I've just re really bought into that. And, uh, and you know, they're a lot of fun to be around. So I, I don't feel pressure because I know we're going to compete really hard every night. Lexi and Merritt, how does that trickle down to you, coaches not feeling pressure? Does that make you also take some of it off a little? Definitely. I think. A lot of times coaches don't realize the impact that they have on teams and I think that was one thing that we talked about a lot at the beginning of the season was they do have a big influence on us and how kind of what we needed to be successful and they really bought into that which has helped us a ton this entire year is they understood and they listened to what we needed and they've done a really good job all of them have. The entire staff has done a really good job of understanding that even when they probably don't want to be super patient with us. They've done a really good job of that and that's helped us as well obviously stay patient with ourselves and stay patient with the season and things like that but I think at the end of the day coaches do have influences on teams and so them being able to not only listen to us but respect that we know what we need as a team and to do their best to do that for us has been huge and I, I mean that builds trust between us and the coaching staff and I think that's huge and you have to have that in a program. Coach, going back to Brazil and picking your captain, just what have you seen from Lexi and Merritt across the whole season just being so influential? They're natural born leaders. Um, you know Lexi's been been through this program, Maris new to it, but she embraced it. We worked hard on leadership in the spring. These guys emerged from that work and have done an amazing job. They have tremendous respect from their, their coaches, the players, uh, and I think you know they, they're uh, one of the things being a great servant leader is is they can take care of people and people feel com comfortable coming to them and working through things and. Uh, this year, this team has, has mastered that as well as any team I've ever coached. And, and again, it, it comes from uh, Lexi and Merritt, you know, understanding what it takes and being able to execute that. So they've, they've done a tremendous job. And that's one of the reasons we've had so much success this year. Lexi, when you see uh, Lane make a play like that, 
lecture yesterday. What's going through your mind at that point, and when you see her go on like that? Um, it's not new. Um, everyone on our team, I'm pretty sure everyone in Devaney and in the country knows that she's going to hustle and do whatever she can. And I mean, I think even when we all heard Coach and Jalen telling her to stop and everything, <laughs> we all knew she wasn't going to stop. So, I mean, I think even Coach knew she wasn't going to stop. So it's not a surprise, but it just shows how much she's willing to do and that she's going to do whatever it takes. I think we all do a little bit, yeah. I think everyone holds their breath a little bit. <laughs> John, with, with Andy Jackson, I know like you see how you can improve her, but just athletically, what do you have to work there with Andy now and then, and then going forward? What kind of athlete is she? Well, she's tall, fast, quick, jumps. So those are some really good qualities to have <laughs> as a volleyball player. Uh, and she works really hard. And... Um, She's got a really good competitive fire in her. So all those things, it's just she just needs reps and experience and, and uh, to help her really blossom into, you know, being a premier middle blocker in this country. Yeah, for Lacey and Merritt, how have you seen her grow in practice and through matches this season? I would say I think just confidence and how comfortable she looks now. Like in the beginning of the season, it if she was struggling or whatever, it might have taken her a little while to get out of it. But I feel like now she's very confident in herself and her abilities and knows that she might make an error, but she can bounce right back. And I feel like, especially as a freshman and in this conference and here at Nebraska, that's kind of a hard thing to establish. And I feel like she's been able to do that very well, especially in the past few weeks. John, who's the best athlete on this team when you think about like they're testing stats and like what you see during a match, like who could go to a track meet and score points, like who's the best athlete? Is Caroline our highest in the oh, I think it's is. Andy. Andy? Yeah. Andy blows us out of the water. Okay, Andy, Andy <laughs> t tests the best, but I would, if I was going to do a heptathlete, it would be Caroline. <laughs> she, she, does, she can do it all. So, so she's got to be second in that testing up there. Mayor, what did it mean to have Lindsay back on the bench in uniform? Right? She didn't play yesterday too, but what did it mean just to have her kind of part of the group and not wearing street clothes sitting on the bench? Yeah, I know she's super excited about it, and we're glad to have her back. Obviously, she never like left the team, but in a way, I know she was kind of struggling with that, just wanting to be back out there, wanting to feel as if she was still giving to the team. And so I am just super happy for her to be able to be back and to be warming up and dressing out and things like that. Every day she's getting closer to being back in. I'm just really excited for her because I know she's been waiting for this and she's been working really, really hard to be in that position. So I'm super excited for her. Any other questions? John, you've, uh, you've got some coaching awards this year, but obviously you have a big team helping you with, uh, with Jalen and Kelly and Jordan. What, what do you respect or appreciate about what they've done specifically to help this team get where they are right now? Um, well, we, you know, we're a staff now that's been together for a while, which is great. Jordan's obviously new, but Jordan's a Husker, so it was an easy transition for her. But, uh, you know, Jalen has a lot of responsibility with our block and defense and how we prepare for teams, and uh, yeah, I trust him a ton. Kelly works with our setters, makes our offensive game plans, trust her a ton. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a group effort that we do, and, and we have some of our GAs are helping and are involved in all that. So, you know, we try to build a great team around these guys, whether it's training them, preparing them, uh, you know, uh, Brian Kamita and Jolene, those guys, getting them physically ready to play. And, um, and Brian does some stuff with them mentally and breathing and visualization. So we're just, you know, I, I figured this out about 10 years ago. You got you to get a great team and surround them with to help them to be the best that they can be. And that way they, they uh, you know, you, you eliminate the, the margin for, you know, not being as successful or maxing out. And that's what we're trying to do with, with our program and our team. And my job is to make sure everybody's working hard at that and try to make them better and, and encourage them to push. And um, so it's a, I don't know if that answered your question, but um, it's, it's a, it's a team effort, definitely. 
compare it, you know, it's crazy to think a year ago you were pulling your options of what was to be next for you in volleyball. Just what would it mean to make it to Tampa, return to the state of Florida, but also just make it to the Final Four? Yeah, I think it's it's so special, and there's no other program that I would want to be doing it with. And I know um, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be here and to be in this position. And I'm super excited to see how far we can go and to see what we can do next. But I don't know. I'm just – it's kind of crazy when you think about a year ago today. Like, it was a completely different scene that I was in. But I'm just super grateful for the opportunity to be here. Jalen, yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, when when we have three days to prepare for somebody, we can we can dial them in really well. Uh, today's a little bit different because we we didn't we didn't even spend any time on Kentucky or Arkansas because I thought it was you look at their stats and everything. I thought it'd be a five game or coin flip, and it's what it turned out to be. So we we just put everything into Georgia Tech. And one of the good things about playing in the Big Ten is you have to prepare for two teams or you have to play a match and then 20 hours later you're playing another team so you have to be able to flip into a different mode and a different game plan and you know that's something we're training all the time we train it in practice we train it during the Big Ten season so these guys are used to it. Are you enjoying the day off for practice day today instead of getting ready for a few a match for a few hours? <laughs> I, well, I think it's just good for the athletes I mean you look at uh, um, Number ten on Arkansas. I mean, she played a hard match last night. The turnaround play, and you know, at three o'clock today or five o'clock today, it would be a pretty quick turnaround for her. So, uh, I just think it's this is the right thing to do for the athletes and have. Um, and again, Amy, I, you know, you asked me yesterday. You know, I know how many people here stayed up to watch, the, you know, Stanford. I mean, it was going into the next day. They got to they got to split that up. I mean, it's just too much in one day. And it's too long. I mean, I was thinking uh, how long Purdue had to wait and then how long um, Stanford and Arizona State had to wait. I mean, I, I can't imagine having to wait all that time, all day long, into the night to play. That's got to be really tough. I probably would have given them all uh, gift cards and we would have gone to Lululemon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think obviously they put up a really, really good fight, but that was also very early in the year. So, I mean, both teams have progressed and have grown a lot. I think, like I mentioned earlier, Arkansas is a very fearless team. They're going to give it their best shot. They're going to give it all that they have. And so I think that's a lot of what you probably saw in that Wisconsin match. Uh, they don't let anything stop them, whether it's what people say about their height or if they're undersized, things like that, they don't let that get in the way. And so they're going to give it their best shot and they're going to do that for us tomorrow. So. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thanks, Thank you. Guys. Thank you.